Hello my friends and welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are kind of moving forward, forward with the abstract painting theme lately. Um, and I wanted to paint this painting inspired by Franco Islike. I think I pronounced that correctly. Um, but it's just a very simple, like almost abstract field. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out how I want to begin with this as to not have to go back and fix things later. Okay, we're going to start with the sky. That's probably the easiest thing to do. So I'm taking just a baby blue, but you can take whatever blue you have. Actually, I'm not going to use baby blue. A little bit of baby blue and a little bit of, um, I don't know the exact color name, but I'm just going to call it like a sky blue. That's sort of what it looks like to me. And we're going to apply it to approximately the top third of the page of the painting. And you kind of want it like at the bottom of that third, you want it to fade into almost nothing. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm rinsing my brush. And I'm just dragging like that blue, sorry, that blue wash across the page. And then I'm going upwards and I'm joining it, creating a, a very gentle gradient. Sort of like this. But I know just from experience that if I let this dry like this, it's going to be too light. So what we can do is either let it dry and then do a second layer, or we can just try and pile it on now. And that's what I'm going with, because I am I always like things can be easier than they... Uh, when, when things are easier, obviously. So I think I'm okay with that. It kind of turned into the top half, but... That's all right, we can always paint over it a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna just lift off a tiny bit of that so it's not quite as dark at the, at the bottom portion. Um, so the next thing that we have to do is uh, just thinking, I should probably let that dry, but I don't want to because I am impatient. So let's just move forward. <laughs> I'll stop if I have to, if I have to let it dry. I do have my hair dryer as always, but I do like to just move with the painting and not wait too long. So uh, we're gonna paint kind of a field for the, for the bottom, I guess it's bottom half now instead of bottom third but I'm taking sort of a yellowish green here. And similar to what we did with the sky, I'm rinsing my brush and I wanna fade it. That was not really a successful attempt at fading it. Let me just, I dipped my brush into the water again, rinsed it and then just dragging it. I'm leaving like the tiniest white gap there because I don't want to touch the green to the blue because then they'll kind of bleed into one another and mix. And I've had that happen way too many times in paintings. And it's uh, just not something I would like to repeat and deal with at the moment. So while this is still wet, we want to add some sort of depth to this painting because right now it's very flat, very 2D. Um, the thing is that sky really needs to be dry <laughs> in order for me to continue but it's supposed to be abstract so we're just going with it i'm taking a darker green or you can just add black to whatever green that you have i have like some random dried darker color on my palette so i just mixed it in to make it a bit darker um and I'm just applying it to the bottom here and uh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Just kind of experimenting. I don't like that so I'm going to kind of fix that later but um, I want to separate this so that there's kind of multiple 
layers of this grass. So there's going to be a layer that goes like this. Like that. And then this is going to be a layer, but I want it to be a little less angled. And then this is going to be a layer as well. Um, but I want it to be much lighter than the rest. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just adding that little stripe. And again, this is supposed to be abstract. So these random lines, I'm leaving them because it'll add to the finished painting. I, at least I hope it will. I'm, I took a little bit of brown. Literally, the only reason I took this brown is because it was on my palette, like it dried on my palette. So for the people that highly request color names, it doesn't matter. Just take what you have and it'll work just fine. Although I can understand there are certain paintings that I've referenced in the past where it was so difficult to place the color that was used it's because it's not like oh this is a shade of blue it was like this magenta purple brown mixture and yeah it was kind of difficult to identify so I I understand where y'all are coming from when you really want to know the color name but I I think by telling well first of all I don't know the color name because I don't have the card but second of all, I think it really limits you as an artist because then, or, or the people that have a really simple palette or a palette that doesn't have color names, they feel like they might not be able to paint this because they don't have that specific color. And that's, and I disagree with that. You can paint any painting that is on my channel with like four colors. You just have to, I guess, learn how to manipulate them and work with them together rather than individually to kind of come up with the colors you need. My channel is not really the best for like um, breaking down how to paint watercolor like oh this is the different brush stroke. I just more teach how to paint different landscapes on here but there are so many I'm sure there's so many um, channels that do kind of go over the color wheel. I should probably watch those because I don't even know half of that stuff um so okay I was kind of blabbing and now I don't know what I wanted to do I I want to make this a teeny bit darker and we're going to be painting trees that are coming from over here so I've just taken some brown I guess some blue has crept up into my I don't really want blue there's a little bit of blue on my paintbrush but Hopefully you won't be able to see it. I want this to be like a shelf here, but this is still wet. So if I do that, then it's gonna bleed. So mm, I'll just do this one for now. No, no, sorry guys. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna let it dry and we'll come back to it. Okay guys, so this should be dry. Uh, and what I'm gonna do first is paint like a set of horizon trees, which I recognize I should have done when this was wet because then it would have created that kind of blurry horizon effect that I want. 
and I can't do that now because it's dry. I mean, I could re-wet it, but I just don't want to. So I just took, I really don't like that green. That is not the abstract green that I'm going for. Let's see if we can fix this. Not that there's a specific green for abstract, but I mean, it's it was too vibrant. And with abstract paintings, maybe I'm wrong, but I get this impression that they're kind of more muted in color. They don't have these big vibrant colors. Um, so that's why I didn't like how vibrant that green was. So I've tilted my paintbrush almost horizontally to the paper and I'm just um, kind of letting my hand shake. That's the best way I can describe what I'm doing just to give the, the tops the impression that these are actually trees in the distance. Um, so I'm going to leave that the way it is. And now I want to paint some um, like big bushy trees and they're gonna kind of start here we'll we'll kind of section off this later I just want to first establish my trees they're going to be a tiny bit higher than this horizon tree line that we painted uh, so I'm just kind of doing a bush like shape to the left here and I'm gonna have a second one and I'm leaving just a tiny gap between the two of them just so there's a little bit of separation there and I'm going over that tree line that I painted So that'll do for now. Um, what we want to do with this now is add darker hues to make these trees look like trees, make them look a little more three-dimensional because right now they look quite flat. So I've taken a darker green and I'm adding it to kind of the center portion like I want this part to be the lightest and I'll gradually make everything else darker so taking a little bit of black and now I'm adding the black here like so Now this doesn't have the like quite the intensity that I'm trying to achieve so I'm just gonna grab a little more black and see this is the problem I have is I say I'm painting an abstract painting and then I spend way too much time on these tiny irrelevant details. Don't do that. Don't do what I'm doing like it's supposed to be it's supposed to be abstract. It's supposed to look like you just slapped some paint on a piece of paper. Um, anyways, so where are we here in our process? Okay, so I want to section this off, right? I said I wanted three layers, so I'm going to have one layer here. And I'm just going to slope it down and then it's going to also slope up and I like that dragging kind of effect of my paintbrush that's what's giving it like that effortless look you know uh, and maybe up here a bit Okay, so 
So that's, that's much more of the thing I'm going for. Very effortless look. I had someone comment on a video. When this video is released, it would have been a few months back. But they were saying, because I previously stuck my piece of paper to like a, a planner, a page out of, a, of an agenda. Um, because that's just what was in the closest vicinity to me because I didn't have very much time. And they were, you know, saying that it looks very off-putting, which is fair. Like, I, I agree, there's better things to choose, right? And I said that. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like, I can totally see what you're coming from. But I just don't have time for that. To, like, look for something better. And, uh, it doesn't even matter. But the, the reply was kind of, like, seriously. <laughs> like, I, I have 20 minutes to film this tutorial because I have to feed my daughter at a certain time. I am not going to waste, you know, precious minutes looking for a more aesthetically pleasing background. Anyway, I found one because it happened to be attached to my palette. And I'm like, yeah, this will probably be better than the other thing I was using. But people will always find something to complain about. Like, I don't mind, her initial comment was fine. Like, it was just advice. But then when I say, yeah, I totally get it, but this is the reason why I can't do it. And then they kind of like... <sighs> Anyway, you can't please everyone, I suppose. I'm just adding darker hues on top of um, that initial thing, like stroke that I painted there. I do want to add a little bit of yellow here. Just very sporadic like this. And I'm going to just take a little bit of white and just add it to my trees to kind of, I don't want to say blend the colors together because that's not what I want to do, but it just adds a, a nice softness to the trees. And um, I think I might just leave it there because we are going for an abstract painting. And I think I have achieved roughly what we're looking for here. There's a tree here, a tree, a couple trees here. When you kind of look at it from a, from, from a, what do you call it? A background, from, when you look at it, <laughs> it looks like a field with some, uh, some trees growing. Sorry, as I was saying that, that I'm done. I just decided I'm going to add just some like very rough clouds in the sky. The palette that I'm using is very opaque, which I love. It's linked in the description. It's um, the Grabby palette if you want to try it out yourself. Um, and so it allows me to take white watercolor and paint on this very light blue background and it shows through, which is amazing in my opinion. So, okay, now I think we're done. I like the little touch of those clouds. So you can peel off your tape. It should reveal a beautiful painting. Uh, I can never rip it off in one, one go. It always takes like four tries for me. My goodness. Okay, there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit subscribe, like, and I will see you in uh, the next tutorial.